Because after two years, their accounts were prepared on a cruel basis, and that showed certain amount of liability to contractors. No tax was deducted on that. Similarly, for service tax, in case of ULBs, service tax is liable on the rent they collect from their own properties. So, if you had accounted for it on a cruel basis, they got notices from service tax. So, these are the implications when you have a time lag. A cruel based accounting will be beneficial only if it is supported by IT and it is real time, which may take. Uh, thanks for what you said. Very frankly, I will take both of your, both your issues. Number one, what you said about 13,000 items being valued at P1. There is no doubt. As I said, in any system, there are, there are bound to be teething problems. And if, in respect of certain items, you are not able to reach the document which gives you the cost, after all, you have to come back. And if, suppose, this item was given by the government, either it had to be fair value or it had to be value had to be won, but its record being maintained somewhere, so far as the physical part there of this concern, I think it still is there. And if at all you want to fair value them today, you can still fair value them and can take it to the capital. Nobody stops you to do that. It is more out of abundant caution or precaution or conservatism that it has been done that way. So far as your other part is concerned, let me put it this way, that I have already said that the backbone of any accounting reform will be the IT. There is no doubt in my mind. And IT has to be very, very robust if you want this particular system to be successful. I am Pritika and we are finance Chris. My question is my question is to Raju Sharan since he is representing CGL that in uh, since accrual accounting we have been talking since 2002 and now even the FM and the government is also talking about accrual accounting then why is other ministries not being asked number one and number two if Railways is being treated as a co corporate entity. Why is railways being asked to maintain double accounting just to you know, merge into the central accounts? That means we do accrual accounting as well as cash accounting. Why can't CGA dispense with cash accounting for railways? And as of now, I think the rules as they exist require the cash accounting and there are certain advantages too. Because if the budget is presented on a cash basis, and if we have to report, I think it would be easier for parliamentarians to understand if we provide a set of financial statements which corresponds to the budget. <coughs> Second, it's not something which is new. In Brazil too, uh, there, was, there are two sets of statements which are produced. It's not difficult to produce two sets of statements because the transaction is entered only once. So as Mr. Chopra was mentioning, if we have a robust IT system, that's taken care of. Long and short of it is once the legal framework is taken care of and it provides for only accrual uh, financial statements prepared on a true basis, it should be fine. This is M. K. Mittal, Director of Finance, DFCCIL. I have one question that today there is no standard format for financial statements in a government setup. Like Indian Railways, when we make uh, the accounting on an accrual basis or a double entry basis and when we, when we are going to make the financial statements there is no standard format available as of now because there is no mandatory uh, rules or requirements available at the moment so the financial statements which we are going to make will be subject to a lot of debate and a lot of continuous 
that is number one. Number two, we don't have the, uh, you know, the accounting norms or accounting standards for government accounting at the moment like we have for other entities. In the second part, I will leave uh, for Mr. Sharon to answer. Of course, I will answer that in part. And so far as your first question is concerned, let me say one thing very clearly. That in absence of even any format, the marshalling of balance sheet is there. Either you do it based upon the permanence or in the form of the liquidity. And the best part is when the company is active there, and there is a schedule, follow that particular schedule, and follow those disclosure norms which are given in the accounting standards. The reason being, even now the company that mandates that whatever may be the format, but if the accounting standard requires something else, please follow that. So if you are going to adopt the accounting standards, if you are going for accounting reforms, do that. Who stops you to? So far as the uh, accounting standards for government departments are concerned, I can only say, as I said, Probably the government would have done well to tell gathers please adopt some of these standards. But any standard, I, I, I know because uh, we had the first accounting standard in 78, but it took us a very long time to make it mandatory. You have to really make people understand and then come to the mandatory status rather than coming straight away to the mandatory status. It is for the, uh, I, I think, the controller to tell after how much time it could be made mandatory. But I personally feel no accounting standard should be made mandatory in the first instance straight away. After all, people have lived with a particular system for a long time. Give them the time. Give, give them the time to adapt themselves and adopt it basically at the end of the day. So that, that's my way of uh, looking at the things. Yes, sir. Mr. Arisha. I would tend to agree with you. I was recently in Jamaica, which, believe it or not, <laughs> Uh, had declared that it had adopted accrual accounting in 2002 and then it backtracked and came up with a new declaration saying that we will go accrual in 2015 and my advice to them as the IMF advisor there was please stick to cash accounting just adopt cash ipsas don't even attempt to come up with your own standards just say what cannot be done and then try and modify that similarly for internal audit it's once again, there are standards, there are practice, the framework which is available. We don't have to necessarily reinvent the wheel every time. Having said that, it's a complex country and there will be standards which will need to be modified. And then finally, of course, by C and E G. So, uh, personally, I don't see it happening anytime very soon. Any other question? If there is none, then I would like to sum it up. Uh, friends, uh, thanks for the three questions. Because I started with three questions and you have stuck to three questions. To me, very frankly, these reforms have their, it's their own significance. Number one, you talk of corporate governance, you talk of identifying the assets, you talk of identifying the liabilities, you talk of uh, bringing on record the contingent liabilities, you talk of bringing on record the uh, leases for that particular matter. I think one of the points which has been made out uh, by the president of the institute already is that there is capital work in progress to the extent of about 2,100 crores. Now it has been brought on record. Let's be very clear about it. The moment that has been brought on record, it means now you will be able to chase what is the aging of this capital work in progress, how long it has been pending, 5 years, 7 years, 3 years, 2 years, and what is further capital commitment as a consequence thereof. I think that's one of the very important things if, you, if we talk of the accounting reforms. And this is one of the reasons only. And if you look at the total railways, what would be the value of the capital work in progress? And the moment this capital work in progress becomes an asset, basically, ultimately, the depreciation needs to be provided there, there, there on. So there are many, many things which will emerge out of these accounting reforms. Now, we, we were talking of costing as a performance driver. Now, when we talk of the costing as a performance driver, one thing is 
that if you have a correct costing, you derive the correct profitability also. But to me, this costing itself is a very ticklish subject. One can say costing, it is my costing. And I am costing it based upon the Indian conditions. Now in bigger organizations, I have been talking of it, whether these are bigger departments, bigger uh, undertakings, we should not say that this is my costing. I should be looking at the international costing standards basically. What should be the costing as per international standards? Unless I compare it, because this is an era of competition, this is a time of competition. If I can save even one rupee somewhere, probably I don't know what is going to be the total impact on the profitability and what will be the cash generation as a consequence thereof. To me, merely being satisfied that I, my variance is positive, that's not enough. Whenever I'm going to budget, whenever I'm going to do the costing, I will start looking at it from the international standard point of view. That what is internationally the standard in respect of this. And if we do that, probably the costing becomes a real performance driver. And, and I think this is where the global accounting system will come into play very handy. Because if you are booking all liabilities, all cost, everything, you are not only on the cash system, I, I think you are going miles and miles ahead of the present uh, system of uh, accounting in those cases. And I think um, both the Mr. Railway Minister Ji and uh, the uh, uh, Finance Minister both talked of outcome budgeting. I, I think after a full system of accounting coming in, outcome budgeting will automatically follow in the times to come. And I think that's the most important. You create an asset. Because you wanted to create an asset, but whether that asset has been able to yield the result which you wanted at the end of the day. If you said that you are changing a particular design of a coach, in that particular case, whether those amenities which were to be given to the customer and whether the customer really feels satisfied with those amenities, to me that is more important. I think it is not important that we change. More important is what is the outcome of that particular change. And I think accrual accounting will definitely bring out uh, that particular thing. To me, we always used to talk that you require a political will to bring a change. Today, in this country, you have a political will to bring in that change. There is no denying that particular fact. And if that political will is there, now the next will has to be of the members of the organization to bring in that change. As I said, to begin with resistance, then acceptance, and then of course the implementation thereof for the purpose of each one and for the purpose of bringing good results for the organization at the end of the day. And uh, thank you very much friends. Thanks to Sulechaza for providing the opportunity. Let me put it that way. Um, thanks to each one for a very patient hearing. Uh, post one session, that's all. Thank you very much.